Hello, everyone, and welcome into another episode of Swarm Talk. My name is Bryce Kuhn. This is the number one Georgia Tech show on the internet, and we appreciate you tuning in today. We take a look at the defense, previewing all three layers. What can this defense be in 2023, and is it going to have to carry like it did last year? All that and more on today's episode of Swarm Talk, brought to you by the Crowded Booth. Pile in here and make yourself feel at home. Coming on the crowded booth with Bryce Coon. We welcome you in here on Swarm Talk, a fantastic Wednesday, and I appreciate you all for tuning in. If you're over in our podcast feed, whether that's Apple Podcast or Spotify, we appreciate you. Make sure to like the, like that. Make sure to follow it. Make sure to subscribe on that feed as well. And if you're not, if you're just hanging out on YouTube, well, make sure to subscribe to the channel. The Road to 2K is almost there, trying to get there before the opener. We only need about 70, 60-something more subscribers to hit 2,000. We'll be in attendance for that opener and we can't wait for to see you along there as well in Mercedes-Benz Stadium against the Louisville Cardinal. My name is Bryce Kuhn. Appreciate you so much for tuning in. Let's talk about the defense. 2023 is nearly here. The regular season, that is, only a couple of weeks away. And the defense for Georgia Tech, as we know last year, let's kind of talk about what they were, what they did. This is a group that had a lot of things going right for them in 2023 towards the end of the season. You saw the toughness, the the mental toughness and the physical toughness of this group and what they had to do and overcome to be able to finish off five and seven, four and four in that last eight games under key. But where does the defense stand? They lost a lot. They still have some nice players. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about each layer starting from the team or the, the group closest I should say, not closest to the offensive line. And that's going to be the secondary. This secondary is going to be very interesting to watch. But the question that I have for you today is, will the secondary have to carry the defense here in 2023? Now, look, you lose Keon White up front. We're going to talk about the defensive line. But the question that I pose to you on this fine afternoon is, the strong suit, the returners, are you going to have to see those guys kind of take a step up? What will that look like, really? Obviously, you have guys like LaMiles Brooks. You've got Clayton Powell Lee as well. But when you look at the depth chart for Georgia Tech coming into the season, other than above the line chart, thank God for that. When you look at the depth chart, one of the most recent ones updated and kind of getting a feel after reading some of, obviously, reading your fall practice reports and hearing the coaches talk, you kind of look on the back end of this defense and you know who your quarterback of the defense is going to be. And I'll go ahead and say it. It's LaMiles Brooks. The job that Brooks has done in maturing here in this 2022 season and now jumping into 2023, kudos to him. He's emerged as not one of the only the best safeties on this team in the conference, but also across college football. And so when you see what Brooks has done, you admire the work he has done. He's put himself in a position to, A, make a lot of money at the next level, or B, set himself for a great opportunity, whether it's at Georgia Tech or elsewhere, for next season. Now, LaMiles Brooks, you know he's going to be probably slotted into that free safety position. Outside of him, you have a competition between a veteran and a guy that played like a veteran last year. Clayton Powell Lee, now a true sophomore, will be obviously playing against Jalen King. What does that look like? Where does this need to happen in these guys? You have two guys that are capable of starting. A lot of folks fell in love with Clayton Powell Lee after Jalen King got injured. King, known better maybe for his defense against the run, Clayton Powell Lee in coverage. I expect that you're going to see a lot of those guys as a tandem group out there. It's a good talent and nice depth at that strong safety position. Uh, elsewhere at the safety, you have a guy in Kari G that can play that nickel spot. But Kari G you know, made some moves last year and continuing to be a part of the process for this defensive group. Uh, elsewhere, staying with that nickel back position, you have K.J. Wallace. You've also got Rodney Shelley. Uh, you know, both of those guys, KJ Wallace kind of being the guy that I think is going to see the majority of the snaps at that nickelback position. When you move over to cornerback, you have one side where you say, okay, this is our de facto starter, and that's Kenan Johnson. Or I'm sorry, that's Spider Sims. Kenan Johnson probably behind him. 
but he's also battling with Kenyatta Watts in the second as uh, K Watt there on the flats, the son that is the redshirt junior transfer transferred in from Texas a couple years ago, you know, was banged up a little bit, got healthy, saw playing time sparingly last year, and he's poised to make a jump here in 2023. Can he do that? Uh, you got a guy that has the NFL size out of a cornerback that you want in Kenyatta Watson. You've got Kenan Johnson. you got Amari Harvey behind him, and you also have Omar Daniels that you brought in as a transfer. But all of these names, and this is not a traditional necessarily preview, I think when you look at the defense – and you look at some of the question marks you might have in the front seven when replacing some elite production that you had, is the secondary going to have to carry this defense early on? And how hard is that truly for a team to do? Now, you're playing a team in Louisville that I think is going to be able to throw the ball a little bit you know, as their season, but they're still trying to figure things out. But as you get into the meat of this schedule, especially that Ole Miss game, when you travel, the secondary, if the front seven has not quite acclimated to where they want to be, the secondary could be facing uh, you know, quite the challenge for having to carry it early on. And so that's going to be very interesting to kind of monitor. Will this secondary have to carry the defense early on? It takes us right into our next position group here, folks, and it's who steps up at the linebacker spot. Now, obviously, we've had the privilege of hearing from Andrew Thacker and Kevin Scherer. And I want to say this before we kind of get into this. I've talked a lot about Buster Faulkner being, in my opinion, one of the best assistant coach hires of the offseason anywhere. I think we could look back on that and say that he has been, uh, or hopefully that he will have been, one of the best offseason hires and a big reason if Georgia Tech has success here in 2023. But Kevin Scherer hasn't been mentioned necessarily as much, but I think that he is as equal a part of what Faulkner is to the offense as Scherer is to the defense. You say, well, why? Well, the experience and the championship-level experience that Kevin Scherer brings is huge. And he's continuing, obviously, to be a guy that Andrew Thacker can bend the ear of. Thacker, obviously, working with linebackers, growing and coming into his own as a defensive coordinator. As Thacker wants to continue to make his ascent, to have a guy like Kevin Scherer, who has coached big-time college football, who has coached championship-level players, in his back pocket, focusing on some of those linebackers, it's really impressive. And I think it's one of the big reasons why this linebacking crew is going to be one of the deepest that we have seen in the past five or six years at Georgia Tech. And not just deep, but quality depth as well. Let's talk about some of the names that I'm excited about. Now, obviously, when you kind of see and you think about it, a lot of people have made noise of Andre White and Braylon Oliver. I don't think it's a guarantee that both of these guys are in the starting lineup their week one against Louisville. I think that Trinius Tatum, having been in the system, gained the respect and continuing to grow as a guy that is a junior now is kind of one of the old men in the room coming back for Georgia Tech. I think Tatum is a guy that could lock down one of those starting spots as we get closer to Louisville. Now, look, I think Andre White and Braylon Oliver are going to play a role. There's no doubt about that. But don't forget about Paul Moalo. Paul Moala spoke to the media and had great things to kind of take away from him. He's a guy that, you know, had uh, had injury issues at Notre Dame, got another shot at Idaho, and made the best of it. And he wanted one more shot kind of at that Power 5 level. And this is a spot for him in Georgia Tech where it's a proving ground for Georgia Tech here in year one under Brent Key. But this is also an opportunity and a proving ground for specifically and individually Paul Moala as well. So I think that Moala could take and seize this opportunity. With those four names right there, that's quality too deep that you feel like going in the season. You've got experience, you've got quality depth, and you got guys that know their role and know their job. Uh, another thing, when you talk about Trinius Tatum, he's a guy that, remember, Charlie Thomas, due to targeting, didn't start two games last year. Tatum had the experience of stepping on the field for the first time as a starter. That's pivotal when you talk about a guy and just the mental mindset that he has to have as a starter. So Tatum has had that. He's come along, but, you know, obviously replacing what Charlie Thomas and Ace Ely did is no easy task for Georgia Tech. Uh, when you look elsewhere in that room, you obviously have guys like Kyle Effort, Tyson Miguez. Uh, the two young guys, uh, you have Austin Dean obviously coming in, but Ashton Heflin as well, Nakari Ashley. You know, it's a group that is building on young talent. 
And what they did in the portal this past offseason, I think, was magnificent in saying we need to get better and we need to get younger as well. So they brought in some veteran guys and Andre White and Braylon Oliver, but in the high school ranks brought guys that can learn from those guys, like you have in the situation with Tatum, learning from the likes of Ace Ely and Charlie Thomas over the past two seasons. Having that is going to be very beneficial for these young guys. So I like where this running this linebacker room, getting ahead of myself right there, but I like where this linebacker room is heading in the direction of 2023. You have veteran talent. You've got homegrown talent necessarily in Trinidad's Tatum. Kyle Effort also could be a piece. Tyson Miguez as well. But the names Andre White, Braylon Oliver, and Paul Moala provide veteran presence and game experience that is going to be pivotal in replacing the production of the two guys that you lost in this room. So we just mentioned a lot of names that could step up at the linebacker position for Georgia Tech here in 2023. You take your pick. But I think that you're going to see, especially, Trinius Tatum really kind of get a stranglehold on that kind of maybe money linebacker position. Uh, when you get to that Mac linebacker, I think Andre White's an option there. You could see Paul Moala. You could see Braylon Oliver. But an interesting thing that Kevin Scherer talked about, and so did Andrew Thacker when the question was posed to them, is could they see some three linebacker sets where you get three guys on the field? We saw, obviously, over the past couple of seasons when Charlie Thomas may be putting more to a pass rusher type role, they would roll out Trinius Tatum in that, in that area to be that third, that Sam linebacker position. Is that something that the Georgia Tech could do this season? I don't think it's out of the question, and neither do the coaches think as well. But go back and watch, and I think it's something huge you're going to see here in 2023, the interchangeable parts of this room. And last but certainly not least about the linebacker position, folks, competition is real. Kevin Shear was quoted in saying in the press conference, I encourage you to go check that out, released this morning. Kevin Shear talking with the media, saying, hey, we're not waiting around to kind of find out what happens. If you're not doing the job, you're fired. We're moving on to the next guy. It's a real competition to this linebacker position and one that is going to be fun to watch. The final question we have to ask ourselves here on the defensive side of the football is can the defensive line impress early? And what I mean about that, it kind of goes hand in hand with the question of the secondary. If the secondary is having to carry a large load and a large amount of the work early in the season, what does that do for the defensive line? What does that mean? Obviously, the notable guy they lost is Keon White. How do they generate pass rush without him? Well, I think it's a combination of a group effort from the interior and really needing one of these veteran guys on the outside to have a breakout season. Let's start on the outside, though. You're probably going to see Sylvain Yon joining Kyle Kennard getting those starting reps. We've talked a lot about these guys. It feels like they've been in the program for a very long time. But is 2023 where we could see a breakout season from one of them? Maybe a Keon White-esque season that puts them on the radar of NFL draft boards? Kind of both guys being really freakish athletes, having the ability to get to the quarterback, can, but can they do it with consistency? Now, I've been a big proponent as well that as NFL continues to show us and as college football is starting to show us more and more, elite interior defensive linemen is not a bad way to go. And we're starting to see pass rush being generated more often and more abundantly from the interior. Does Georgia Tech have the horses to be able to do just that? You have guys like Daquan Douse, Micaiah Scott, Zeke Biggers. Uh, but you also have a guy in uh, Itanosa Rubin, the transfer, the redshirt senior from Clemson, where you're starting to build veteran depth there. Zeke Biggers entering his third year in the program. Douse, a redshirt junior. Micaiah Scott, a junior as well. Can one of those guys or a tandem, a duo of those guys, be able to generate enough pressure up the middle that alleviates the pressure, not only off the edges, but in that secondary as well. That's going to be something to kind of monitor and go after and see what this Georgia Tech defensive line can do. I think that this is a group, and I want to include Jason Moore in that as well. I think it's a group that has the potential to be really, really good this season. We just really don't know if it's going to be from one or two guys or maybe necessarily one guy just stands out. Is it going to be a group effort, or is it going to be another standout situation with some auxiliary help? Obviously, I love it when we talk about Micaiah Scott and Zeke Biggers. I think Biggers has a chance to just be an animal up front for this front seven. But one of the biggest questions I have is Sylvain Young joining Kyle Kennard. Can they have a breakout season? Or does Noah Collins, Kevin Harris, Josh Robinson – 
or even Eddie Kelly, the transfer. Any of those guys really step up and we start to see a pass rush that maybe is feared once again on the flats, that's going to be something to note as well. So this defense obviously has the potential to do some impressive things. It's going to take a great defensive effort, and obviously in week one, to calm down a Louisville offense that a lot of people are high on. My question for you as we wrap it up, where do you see this defense rocking and rolling? Where do you see this group kind of trending towards? They were a strong suit last year, and how much can the secondary carry this defense until the linebackers and defensive line really get in the groove? What's the time frame until maybe, hopefully not, the wheels fall off? It's going to be something interesting to watch with this defense, and I'm excited as the season continues to get closer. My name is Bryce Kuhn. This is episode of Swarm Talk, previewing the defense. Three questions for this defense heading into 2023. We'll talk to you next time later in the week about the offense. We're going to have season predictions and a special guest joining the show on that predictions episode as well, a former Yellow Jacket that you're going to have a lot of fun talking with. Check us out on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe. Hit those notifications bell so you know when we go live next time. And we'll catch you next time here on Swarm Talk, brought to you by the Crowd of Booth. Pile in here and make yourself feel at home. The Crowded Booth is coming on. The Crowded Booth with Bryce Coon.